now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, the Anastasia Nurses Academy was an imposing-looking training school, thought John Steed. No expense spared. Yet this was the place that had ordered 10,000 cream-wove bond envelopes from Maidwell and Pews. So far, Steed's only clue to the mysterious deaths of some of Britain's leading ear, nose, and throat specialists. When Steed called to make a few discreet inquiries, a rather beautiful nurse was hanging up a skeleton. Uh, aren't you going to introduce us? Uh, his name's McTavish. Uh, what's he doing out of his cupboard? He lives out here during his exam. Ah, so you can uh, bone up on your facts. <laughs> uh, ask the matron if she can spare me a few minutes, will you please, nurse? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 3 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel, investigating the deaths of the ear, nose and throat specialists, find the whole affair not to be sneezed at. John Steed saluted McTavish, the student's skeleton, with his umbrella, and followed the shapely form of the nurse, Melanie, down the corridor. He had privately decided that he quite liked women to have a little flesh on their bones. When Matron appeared, Steed wondered if quite so much flesh was necessary. Ah, there you are, Mr. I'm Matron Alice. Uh, morning, Matron. Uh, good of you to... No, not at all. I only hope I can be of service. Mr. Steed, ah. you heard of my foundation. Oh, and I've read not. No? Oh, what a cloistered life you ministering angels lead. Uh, the Steed Foundation is dedicated to the service of the sick. Oh, I see. Buying your way into heaven, Mr. Steed. Well, it's the only place left, Matron. We are thinking of endowing an establishment of this nature. Oh, well, this establishment is unique, Mr. Steed. We uh, pride ourselves in setting the highest possible standards. Oh, I appreciate that, Matron. All we can hope to do is to follow lamely in your footsteps. Well, uh, what is it you want to know? By the secret of your success. <laughs> well, that is simple. We only accept what we consider to be the cream of the nursing profession. Uh, is there much paperwork involved? Paperwork? Oh, I, I'm hopeless at administration. You see, I, I wondered if I'd be biting off more than I could chew. Yeah, the amount of correspondence we have to deal with is, well, nothing out of the ordinary. Letters of acceptance or rejection, mostly rejection. We receive roughly 200 applications per month. One or two are successful. Well, I'm sure you're right to be so selective. So it would come through something like 50 letters a week. Oh, well, something like that. Hmm. Well, I don't think that would present too great a problem. I'm most grateful to you, Matron. They're always glad to meet a genuine philanthropist. I only wish they were more like you. Uh -huh. Well, if one's born with a silver spoon in one's mouth, one must see that it feeds as many people as possible. Uh, goodbye, Matron. No, goodbye, Mr. Seed. <laughs> Emma Peel was driving at high speed back from the country. It had been a wasteful trip. She'd tried to follow the Rolls Royce that contained Priest, the postman who'd been delivering those fatal envelopes. But Priest had been on to her and had, in fact, completely turned the tables. Mrs. Peel didn't know it, but she was being tailed back to London. Whatever happens, she mustn't see us, Dexter. I understand, sir. It'll be easier as soon as we reach town. There'll be much more of this type of car on the road. They're not easy to tail in the roads. I think it's the last thing the young lady expects, sir. Mrs. Peel reached town in record speed and made for Steed's apartment. Mm -hmm. 
some minutes later, and half a block away, the rolls glided to a stop. So, our little bird has come home to roost, Dexter. It would appear so, sir. Do we pay our nest a visit, sir? But of course. One of these? Dexter, the chauffeur, reached into his pocket and drew out an envelope. No, 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 no. I want her alive. Here, I think we'd better use this. Priest produced a cut glass scent spray, handling it with extreme care. We must find out what she knows and who she's working for. This should do the trick. Up in Steed's apartment, Mrs. Peel looked round, saw that Steed's bowler and umbrella were not on the hall stand, and made for the drinks table, poured a large drink, and picked up the telephone. Priest and Dexter left the car and made their way up to Steed's apartment. Hello? Institute of Allergic Diseases? May I speak to Dr. Fawcett, please? Yes, I'll hold on. Dexter and Priest, having checked carefully, have found the right corridor and approached Steed's front door. This must be it. Over to you, Dexter. You'll come right over then. Fine, I'll be expecting you. Thank you, Dr. Fawcett. Oh, hey, ho. Yes? Uh, good day. Market research. We're canvassing for opinions on the new perfume due to appear in the shops next spring. I have the spray here. We call it Oblivion. I think you should fall for it. But Mrs. Peel sensed all was not well. She noticed the shadowy figure of the postman in the background. She looked at the scent spray in Dexter's hand and the drink in her own. Without hesitation, she threw the drink in his face. Oh, As he uh, stumbled into the room, Mrs. Peel chopped him neatly. Uh, oh. Freeze uh, swung into action, grappling with Mrs. P. Uh, Dexter uh, struggled to his feet, clutching at the scent spray. Hold her, hold her. Oh, please. no, you don't. Uh, uh, no. Uh, uh. Uh, all right. I've got her. Help me. The sooner we get her down to the car, the better. Come on. It was some while after that unpleasant happening that Steed arrived home. He started to remove his keys from his pocket when he noticed that the front door was ajar. He hesitated, prodded the door gently with his umbrella. That someone was waiting inside, he had no doubt. Warily, he pushed the gap wider and entered. Mrs. Peel. The man who spoke was a fussy little grey-haired creature... He was sitting primly on a chair in the middle of the room, as though endeavouring to create his own atmosphere of isolation. Comfortable? No. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, I am, frequently. Choosing curtains like those. I rather like them. Too dangerous. 22.3% of all hay fever sufferers are allergic to that type of material. That's common knowledge, surely. And look at the, the dust about the place. Breeding ground for all sorts of bacteria. Where's Mrs. Peel? I haven't the faintest idea, Mr. Uh, uh, Forfeit. Dr. Forfeit. Institute of Allergic Diseases. Oh, is that so? I understand, then, that Mrs. Peel asked you to meet her here. But that is so. Four hours, 31 and a half minutes ago. In connection with Dr. Padley's death? In connection with the deaths of Dr. Padley and Dr. Seaton. What? Dr. Seaton died this morning, soon after the death of his partner. The same symptoms? As far as I can ascertain, yes. Then Emma Peel was certainly onto something. Uh, when did you say... Steed broke off as his foot brushed against something on the carpet. He stopped and picked up the scent spray. Hmm. Odd. Very odd. A scent spray in the middle of my carpet. What do we deduce from this, Doctor? That Mrs. Peel was here before I arrived. She probably phoned me from this very apartment. True. Smell this. Hey, steady, steady. Well? Chloroform. I don't like it. You're not the only one. If chloroform is exposed to light and air, it oxidizes to generate phosgene. Which, uh, Dr. Fawcett, would you think me inhospitable if I suggested we postpone our little chat? Not at all. What's another four hours to a busy man? Well, it's just that I'm due for a rather unpleasant interview. Already, I can hear a voice saying, 
Lost her? Lost Emma Peel? What on earth do you mean, Steed? Well, she's disappeared, Mother. Dirty work? Smells. Here, the spray. A, a trifle unhygienic, too. Uh, inordinately careless. Scotch? Oh, please. It ain't possible to go on. Not much. Our time's getting short. Four more ear, nose, and throat men dead in the last six hours. One in Brazil, one in Australia, and two in Russia. So done. And that. What's the next move? Find the answer to the puzzle. What sort of puzzle? Why a nurse's training college would order 10,000 envelopes. Well, that sounds like a road to nowhere. Maybe, but it's got to be traveled, though. Need any help? No, thank you. One man job. Mine. When? This evening. And so, later, John Steed journeyed again to the Anastasia Nurses Academy. Outside the main doors, he read the motto, Three C's. Three C's. Competence, comfort, compassion. Hmm. And no difficult locks, I trust. There weren't. Steed entered silently. He found Matron's office without trouble. Then he heard an unusual noise. Unusual, anyway, for that time of night. Steed tiptoed to another door and opened it. To his amazement, Steve found himself gazing at a long line of typists, all typing away at envelopes, throwing them into growing piles in their delivery baskets. Steve closed the door. Three C's. Curiouser and curiouser and curiouser. Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo. <laughs>